Let me ask you this. We have not spoken since former President Trump uh, sewed up the nomination, which he did earlier this week, mm -hmm. and he has received endorsements from some of the people who were running against him, but we have not heard from you. Will you be endorsing your former president? Uh, you were on the ticket with him last time around. Well, Martha, I appreciate the question. And it should come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year. Mike Pence just joined the growing list of former Trump allies that refused to endorse him heading into the 2024 election. What does it tell you when all of these people that worked closely with Donald Trump are now saying he's not fit for office? He is a threat to our country. He doesn't even understand the fundamentals of the Constitution. Do people say this about Joe Biden? No, they don't. And Joe Biden also doesn't brag about hiring the best people just to have those best people flip on him in a few months and say, this guy is nasty and not easy to work with. I thought this would be a good opportunity to quickly go through the list of people that used to work for Donald Trump who now refuse to endorse Donald Trump. Let's go through their statements and see what they have to say about him. First of all, we have his vice president, Mike Pence, who says, the American people deserve to know that President Trump asked me to put him over my oath to the Constitution. Anybody who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. During my presidential campaign, I made it clear that there were profound differences between me and, and President Trump on a range of issues. Uh, and, and not just uh, our difference on my constitutional duties that I exercised on January the 6th. I mean- Did you catch Pence's speech? No. Are you a fan of Mike Pence? No. Why not? Because he was with Donald Trump. And I think he's unloyal. You think he's unloyal to Donald Trump? Yeah. In what way? I, th I think he's just, now that he's away, he's bad mouth, and you know, why didn't he do something while he was in there? Well, what Donald Trump wanted him to do was overturn the results of a Democratic election. And he keeps saying over there, he put the Constitution over Trump. So don't you think that's a smart thing to do? Wouldn't you prioritize the Constitution over Trump? Yes, I would. The Constitution comes first. So when Trump asked Pence to override the results of the election, he you, was wrong. Trump was wrong? I believe so, yes. Interesting. So you can understand why it was bad-mouthing him now. He's trying to set the precedent that Trump isn't someone who should be in office. That's right, yeah. Interesting. We then have his second attorney general, Bill Barr, who said, someone who engaged in that kind of bullying about a process that is fundamental to our system and to our self-government shouldn't be anywhere near the Oval Office. Remember, Bill Barr was Donald Trump's sword and shield just a few years ago. He protected him from everything. He endorsed everything Donald Trump says. And now, ever since the election fraud lie, he can't. His first secretary of defense, James Mattis, says, Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even protect pretend to try. Instead, he divides us. His second Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, I think he's unfit for office. He put himself before the country. His actions are all about him and not about the country. And then, of course, I believe he has integrity and character issues as well. Take a look at this clip of Mark Esper describing the fascistic turn Donald Trump took during his last months in office. You know, eventually it culminated but the, the long break, simmering break between he and myself in June of 2020 when he wanted to deploy active duty troops on the street of Washington, D.C., and, and suggested actually that we, we shoot American, um, uh, Americans in the street. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of more what you'll see, this very uh, hyper-aggressive behavior and this, uh, you, you know, willingness to flaunt norms and, and rules, if you will. Even General Mark Milley gave one of the most powerful statements, and let me play this clip for you. We are unique among the world's armies. We are unique among the world's militaries. We don't take an oath to a country. We don't take an oath to a tribe. We don't take an oath to a religion. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or to a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. We don't take an oath to an individual. We take an oath to the Constitution and we take an oath to the idea that as America and we're willing to die to protect it. But we're not done. His first Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, says Trump's understanding of global events, his understanding of global history, his understanding of U.S. history was really limited. It's really hard to have a conversation with someone who doesn't understand the concept for why we're talking about this. Surprise, surprise, Donald Trump is just dumb. I don't like to use that word a lot, but Joe Biden would run circles around him when it comes to foreign and domestic policy. We all know this. If you ask Trump, Trump and Biden about what's going on in Israel right now, 
Which one do you think would give a more complex answer? His first ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, he used to be good on foreign policy, and now he has started to walk it back and get weak in the knees when it comes to Ukraine. A terrible thing happened on January 6th, and he called it a beautiful day. Now, when Nikki Haley dropped out, she sort of endorsed Trump in a roundabout way by saying the onus is on him to gain these votes, but I have a feeling Nikki Haley will be voting for Joe Biden. I have a feeling if you got most of these people in a one-on-one, -on -one, they would admit that Joe Biden is a superior candidate. And of course, Chris Christie, who worked very close with him and is now referred to as a rhino or even a Democrat by MAGA said, someone who I would argue now is just out for himself. His second national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, we saw the absence of leadership, really anti-leadership, and what that can do to our country. His third national security advisor, John Bolton, I believe foreign leaders think he is a laughing fool. Remember when Angela Merkel came out saying that she just cannot converse with Donald Trump because he is nasty over the phone? We're just getting started with this list. His former acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, who resigned as a U.S. special envoy to Ireland after January 6th, said, I quit because I think he failed to bring the president when we needed him the most. One of his many former communications directors, Scaramucci, said he is the domestic terrorist of the 21st century. Just keep in mind, these people worked closely with him and know him better than any of these MAGA sycophants I talked to out in the field. Another former communications director, Stephanie Grisham, said, I am terrified of him running in 2024. We should all be. Betsy DeVos, who resigned after January 6, said, When I saw what was happening on January 6 and didn't see the president step in and do what he could have done to turn it back or slow it down or really address the situation, it was just obvious to me that I couldn't continue. His Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chao, who resigned after January 6th, again said, At a particular point, the events were such that it was impossible for me to continue given my personal values and my philosophy, something that Donald Trump does not have. He doesn't hold any personal values other than me, me, me. What can benefit myself? His first Secretary of the Navy, Richard Spencer, The President has very little understanding of what it means to be in the military, to fight ethically, or to be governed by a uniform set of rules and practices. That one is especially potent also because Donald Trump disparages military members all the time. His first Homeland Security Advisor, Tom Bosert, the president undermined American democracy baselessly for months. As a result, he's culpable for the siege, an utter disgrace. His former personal lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, Donald's an idiot. What more needs to be said? A White House lawyer, Ty Cobb, Trump relentlessly puts forth claims that are not true. Maybe I need to edit together a compilation of all of these people being called the best workers by Trump only to turn on him months later. I think it's very indicative of how hard he is to work with, but also it tells you that Donald Trump will only be putting loyalists around him if he gets back into office. He understands that the mistake he made on January 6th was having someone like Milley and having someone like Mike Pence in his way. So if Donald Trump gets back into power, we won't be hearing people turn on him because he will make sure his new cabinet is airtight or he'll at least try. He's pretty incompetent. But I have a feeling he knows who's loyal to him now. That's why Laura Trump is the head of the RNC. She will not back down whatsoever under any circumstances because they're family. My name is Adam Mockler. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment a blue heart, and subscribe, and have a great day.